now we're ready to, to get things going. So I'm going to bring up, uh, before I do, I'm going to bring up our, our first speaker, uh, Nikisha Michelle Key. Give it up for Nikisha. Right. She's got a really cool bio, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to read this. Uh. Dating expert, TV personality, Huffington Post contributor, and founder of the Ultimate Match Agency, specializing in finding love for plus-size individuals. Uh, Nikisha supplies women with the most holistic dating plan to finding love, and she's been featured in everything from Success Magazine, uh, Bustle, Red Book, Black Enterprise, uh, Plus Model Magazine, Ebony, and more. One more time. Give it up for Nikisha. <laughs> and a feel-good junkie. If it feels good, I'ma do it. I'ma take a risk and I am going to do it. See, I'm just this little girl at heart. I know that I look like a grown woman, but I'm really a little girl at heart. And so anything that's a risk and it takes a dare, you believe I'm going to do it. Because I feel like we should all follow our dreams no matter what. And I am a dream chaser. But I have this issue. This issue with I am always being bored. Always being bored. And you know what? With being bored, I'm always chasing my next adventure. And my next adventure, a few years back, I'm about to tell y'all a secret, so what goes on in here gotta stay in here. <laughs> I wanted to be the Oprah of Nigeria. And what comes, where that came from was when I had a child at 14 years old, everybody told me I had messed up my life. And so I was on a, a rampage to prove I did mess up my life. And so I always felt like I had to be more than, better than, and prove a point. So I decided that I am going to be the Oprah, okay? I am going to take what I learned in my education, getting a master's degree. I took my child with me to school. I did social work administration for over 16 years. And in doing that, I also transferred my skills and became a TV personality and got to be uh, Queen Latifah. I mean, my life was coming together. I was doing really, really good, hosting my own shows on Crowded House with uh, HGTV. My life was coming together until one day I decided to do some soul searching that took me all the way to Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa. And in Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa, the people loved me. Oh my God, when I would walk through the street, they would say, my sister, my sister from America, we like you. What are you gonna do a talk? What are you gonna talk to us about? You know those things, talk to us. And so over there, not only did I fall, I found my soulmate, my soulmate in a place that I actually love, and my soulmate, my heart connect, my life partner in Nigeria. So being that I found him and I found a place that I truly love and loved me back, not tolerated, loved me back, I said, you know what? I'm going to be to Nigeria where Oprah has always been to me. And I could just see myself setting up my empire over in Nigeria, getting on TV, talking about love, talking about dating, talking about relationships, teaching them how to get everything back together again. It made sense. Why would God send me all the way to Africa to meet my soulmate and to fall in love with a land if I wasn't supposed to be there and make a mission of it and make a big impact? And that's what I did. I decided, I decided, I didn't talk to my husband about it, I decided that I was just going to sell all my stuff and move to Africa and follow my dream. So as a life coach, I had a practice. I decided I'm not taking any more clients because I need to stay focused on what I'm getting ready to do in Africa. I have a bigger mission. And the clients that I had, I was kind of paying attention to it, but not much because I was on my next big high, my next big adventure. So I sold all my stuff and it sold fast. And I said, this must be God. It's selling fast. Yes, I am in alignment. Thank you, universe. So I sold everything <laughs> and took myself all the way to West Africa. And here was the plan. There wasn't a plan. The plan was just get there and just let the universe guide me. <laughs> 
Well, I still only had about $5,000. I actually had 10, but I decided you better buy it, get a coach. So I got a coach, so that was half of my 10. And then I um, end up just having the 5,000. But what I didn't know, living there and visiting are two different things. How can you do work in the dark? The power outage kept me not having power. I couldn't even um, power up my, my phone. I didn't have a laptop. Then you never know when the power was going to come back on. And not only did the power never come on half the time for one week, we didn't have power for an entire week. How are you running a business? What is that doing to your brand? Then I said, okay, let me try to Skype with my clients. Could not Skype with the clients because when trying to Skype with them, um, the data plan would leave really, really fast. So I couldn't even Skype. Then I tried the telephone. When I did the telephone, the credits that they use are so antiquated that it runs out really, really fast. So I couldn't even talk to people on the phone. So now I'm out of money. I'm looking at my husband like, why are we doing this? And he said, I didn't tell you to come. And now I don't have a business. I don't have a business. I don't have any money. And that's when I knew I fucked up. <laughs> that's when I knew. Me and Boyle had a talk. He said, babe, you need to go back home. The problem with going back home was I knew that I needed to go back home because everything was too overwhelming. I didn't have the culture competency. I didn't have the money, the resources, and I didn't have a plan. So on my way back to the United States, broke, credit card charged up, without my husband, with my daughter, I'm calling people in George Bush International Airport asking for a place to stay, because I fucked up. So as I mentioned, uh, we haven't done one of these in a, in a long time, and I've totally skipped over like a whole big part of the fuck up nights that I was supposed to talk about. So thank you, Nikisha. Um, it's that's brave, right? To get up here and like admit failure and just like you know look a bunch of strangers in the eyes and say, yeah, I, I really fucked up back there. That was that wasn't that wasn't cool. Um, so can we give it up one more time? <laughs> And so y'all might have also noticed that the slides were kind of going in the background by themselves. So the speakers have 40 seconds per slide to, to time along with their story. Um, and then this would be the point in which we open it up to a Q&A to dive a little deeper on some of the points that you talked about or if something just came up interesting. I saw you had a lot of stuff that you had to sell. Um, I have some questions about that. Um, and so uh, I was supposed to tell you all that before she came up here. So um, so now, uh, does anybody have any questions? Anybody want to um, ask Akisha anything about her, her story? Yes. So you've got, you got to give us a little bit of the next chapter. So what happened after the airport? <laughs> what happened after the airport? And that's that's great. And, and we coach them up, right, to, to not talk about what's next oh, because... Gosh. Just so, you, just so you know, because like, she's doing great, right? She's here, everybody's breathing, we're, we're doing good. And really to, to focus on like the actual, like what's the failure and kind of the lessons learned behind it. So with the exact point, so, so what happens next? So just as a heads up, so, yeah. so what happened next? I was homeless for a while. I had to live between my brother and sorority sisters and got put out of people's house because I'm unemployable. You know when you're an entrepreneur, you are unemployable. <laughs> and a lot of people didn't believe it. Like, oh, she's just being lazy. She don't want to do anything. But I believed in my dreams. So make a long story short, I ended here in Atlanta and doing great. As you see, <laughs> rebuilt my life. And that's my husband. The one that sent me home. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have any other questions? Yeah. When you said you got to um, Nigeria, you had $10,000. You said you spent 5000 on something, but I couldn't quite get what that was. I got a coach. Because, you know, as an entrepreneur, they always say you must have a coach. So I was like, you know what? 5000 is enough for us to live off for a while. Because my coach, I can put a penny, penny down. She's going to help me, you know, build this empire in, in Lagos. So... That's what I did. 
did anyone hear coat when she said that the first time? $5,000 coat? I'm like, that is for Legos. $5,000 coat? You got $10,000? $5,000 on the suit? Ten would have been that. Yes. All right. So you told us people uh, learn from their mistakes. So what are some things that you think you did right during that season of your life? Looking back. Looking back, you know what? I don't regret going. Um, and I felt like it was really bold. And it says something to people around me. This girl really believes in herself and she believes in her dreams that she'll do anything to not let people hinder her or stop her. So I feel like I got that right. And in Nigeria, I have a whole host of friends. I have a whole, if you guys don't like me ever again, I can always go back. And I have a whole host of friends over there. I even have a church. I have everything over there. All right, we got time for one more. Okay, so I'm an independent person pretty much. You know, I drive myself around, I do what I want to do, but my husband was very afraid that people would take advantage of me because um, they say when, when they look at me, I look Nigerian, but when I, when I talk, then they know that I'm American. And he didn't want anybody taking advantage of me. And you know, sometimes I could be a hothead and I would just order me a cab and jump in the cab and go to some of my little networking meetings in the island area. And it made him afraid and because of safety issues. So not being up to snuff enough to take care of myself or learn the culture enough that I knew some of the language and that I really knew the land and the area um, to be so free. And also, I was kind of thinking, like when I got over there, because I kept planning, because I built my business through the internet, um, so I kept thinking I was going to get over there and just have one big, you know, dating and relationship forum and things like that, but when I got over there, I realized they are really about their money and the way they negotiate is challenging and it's it's really and when they know you're American they automatically think you're rich so that didn't happen so it was a lot of things didn't happen just because I didn't know how to deal with the people and because my husband is working he can't be there to babysit me <laughs> all right let's give it up for Nikki. Let's